Okay, let's talk about remote functions. So remote functions are cool objects that allow you to communicate between the clients and the servers and vice versa. Um, but I specifically want to talk about an issue with them in which um, really it shows bad architecture in your system that should be addressed and changed. And that specifically has to do with when you are on the server and invoking a client with them. And I'll explain why. But first of all, let's just go over high level what is a remote function. So on the screen here, we have a visual representation of the client server model. So the red block represents the server and the green blocks represent the individual clients connected to the server. So these are like the players in the game. Now the purple lines represent the data flow connection between the clients and the server. So this would be kind of the path your remote function takes. Obviously clients don't communicate directly with clients, they have to go through the server first when that happens. All right, and the black uh, little block here on the screen it represents data that's being transmitted between on those lines. All right, so the code for setting up a remote function is quite simple, um, just, to, just to show it really quick. On the server, it looks like something like this. So you reference or create the remote function, um, and then you bind a function to the on server invoke property. So really simple, and this is basically a really high level web request at the core of it. And so we can arbitrarily return whatever data we want, and it'll, it'll get back to the client just fine. Um, but yeah, it's just a high level, super abstracted version of a web request. On the client, it's really simple to invoke those functions. And so again, you reference the remote function and then you call it, you invoke it. So what's important about this um, is that this call right here is synchronous. It's blocking, it yields, whatever you want to say about it. Uh, in, in essence, it's going to wait for this to finish before moving on. And this is necessary because you're making a web request. You know, when you make a request over the internet, um, it doesn't happen instantaneously. It, it takes a little bit of time, an arbitrary amount of time. You know, it might happen in 10 milliseconds, but it might take three seconds. You, you really don't know what to expect. And so when you call this function, you're going to arbitrarily wait a certain amount of time uh, for your data to be returned. You don't know. Keep that in mind as we go forward. But we expect that on the client side when we're doing this. That's fine. Now, again, as you can see, it's really simple. So to demonstrate on screen what this would look like, you have data on the clients, and then you invoke the function on the server. The server does something, and then it returns something back. Maybe it returns nothing back. It doesn't matter, but it's, re it's waiting for a response back from the server. So that's kind of the flow from client to server to client. Now, again, to that yielding thing, you know, if I threw in a wait three right here, that means that when my client sends information to the server on that remote function, that's going to wait here for three seconds and then come back to the client. In those three seconds, my client can't do anything, not on that thread at least. And so it's just sitting there waiting, idling for information to come back. And the information comes back and it moves on with its day. Right? So that is that. Now the problem comes when we reverse this flow and we start at the server and we say, well, we're on the server and we want to invoke a function on the client and then wait for information to come back from there. This is a problem for a bunch of different reasons and I'll kind of lay out a couple of them quickly. First of all, it's um, not guaranteed that there is a function bound there yet. You know, if, if the player just joined the game and you try to invoke uh, a remote function for them, it's possible that that client hasn't had time to set up that remote function. And if that's the case, you're, you're gonna throw an error uh, and that's not gonna be any good. So then you've got to handle errors on the server side and that gets messy. But also, you don't necessarily know what you're going to get back from the client. The client could be exploited, right? So who knows what function has been bound client side. You know, maybe your code did something, but maybe an exploiter came in and bound something else. And if that's the case, then, you know, who knows what's going to happen. And the, not, the biggest problem with that, uh, one would obviously be the data that's being returned, but the biggest problem would be yielding. Again, if this was not a server script, but a local script, and the exploiter decided, well, I'm going to do wait, you know, 1 million or whatever that number is, uh, then the client has just caused a huge issue for your server, because when your server invokes this, it's going to wait forever, and it's just going to be hung up on that, that function call the whole time. 
No, that's that's terrible. You don't want that to happen to you. And so in that example, you know, you sent data to the server, and the server is waiting for information back, but it's never getting anything back. And so you've held up that thread indefinitely uh, because the client is doing something with it, and you don't know what. So there's kind of a security issue there, right? And you don't want that to happen. And so really, in essence, you should try to design your systems to avoid ever needing the server to request information from the client. It's kind of an anti-pattern, if you will. So again, if you should never be, you should never find yourself in a situation where you've got data here and you need to send it to a client and get things back. That's not the direction of flow that you should ever want in your system. You know, this is why you don't see this ever in a web framework. Never in any web framework are you going to see the server asking the client for information and waiting for a response back. Instead, you use events, right? So instead of a function, you have remote events. And so this is nice because these are essentially fire and forget things. So, you know, essentially, if we did that from the client side, we send the server an event, and we're not waiting for anything back, so we just move on with our day. So we don't have to wait around at all. We just send and forget. Um, it doesn't matter what the server does with that information. It, you know, it doesn't, we don't care about that. We're just sending information and moving on with our day. Now, the same thing would go for the server. So maybe we want to send information to the client, but we don't care what gets back, right? Maybe we're just informing all the clients that you know a new round in the game is starting or something like that. So we just fire an event to each client, and we don't care what they do with that information. We're just letting them know, saying, hey, this is happening. You don't, lead, you don't need to let me know what's happening, but this is what's happening, right? Fire and forget. So that kind of eliminates that yielding problem and the uh, possibility of the client exploiting that data line right there. So that's a lot better and uh, should be the, the practice followed, especially when it comes to uh, the server invoking the client. Now, if there is a situation in which you really do need information from the client and the server is asking for that information, the way to do that is going to be using or just a remote event in two directions, right? So the remote function simplifies it, right? Because it's just one thing. You call the function, you wait for it to come back. But again, because of those problems, I don't recommend doing that. Instead, using a remote event, you know, from the server, you could say, hey, client, here's an event. I, I'm requesting information about, uh, I don't know, maybe what weapon you have equipped or what color you've chosen for something, whatever. Um, and then we move on with our day. And we just expect that at some point in the future, the client is going to fire back another event to let us know that information. And so, you know, when the client decides and whenever it figures it out, it fires another event back to our server and says, hey, here's the information you requested. And so what's important about that architecture then is that our server doesn't necessarily care if it gets that information back. It would be nice if it did, but it's not a necessity. And most importantly, we're not waiting around for that information. So I think that covers kind of the, the biggest pieces here. Again, to sum this up, uh, when it comes to remote functions, I recommend only using it for the client to invoke the server. You know, that's a great use of a remote function. However, I would never recommend using it from the server side. A server should not be invoking the client. All right, I think that's it.